Welcome to Toisille near La Tombe in France and we are here on our annual get together with all the account managers from all around Europe. It's our one chance in the year to fish together, swap ideas and uh, hopefully catch a load of big fish. You'll remember on this very trip a couple of years ago, Johnny Mann was lucky enough to catch an 87 pound common and that same week Julien had a 70 pounder and a 60 pounder. Um, I managed one bite, fluked to 50 pounder myself and that's why we're here. This place is full of absolutely massive fish. But as you can see, we are racing against the daylight, that typical Saturday syndrome. Everyone's trying to get out there before it gets dark. I've got two rods fished out by the island at 130 yards already with a bit of bait around it. This one's going closer on a bit of gravel, a few more spawns over the top, and we'll see what tonight brings. But quite a lot was caught last week, so expectations are high. A sail summit at Cora is not your standard sail summit. It is. Yes. What are those? <laughs> we don't go into some boring hotel and sit around uh, t tables um, uh, for meetings the whole day. No, we're here at the lake, we're fishing, and I try to get the meetings with my boys in throughout the week. We don't see each other very often, so I might go to them maybe twice a year, but it always involves airplanes or trains, a lot of traveling. So for me, having them all together here around one leg is a unique opportunity. And then the most important part for me is spending quality time with the boys during the day, during the evening, sharing a beer, just getting on with each other. Well, middle rod is away. I never expected it to happen as, quick, as quickly as it has. Oh, I think I'm still wearing that other rod. No idea how far out this fish is at all. This is 34 rod lengths. I feel it grating down that other line the whole time now. Go for the net. Come on. Get in that net. Get in that net. Get in that net. Yes, get in! Wicked. Oh, what a battle that was. A few hours after rebaiting and more than a few miscasts, the middle rod was away again. Get in that net. Get in that net. Bosh, got him! Oh, wicked. Steady take on the right hand up. Get in. And there it is, the biggest one of the pair from uh, the early hours of the morning. Unfortunately, through my own uh, negligence, the other one has got out of the sling. So the 36 pounder I cannot show you, but obviously you saw me land it, so it did happen. Uh, but this one came on the same rod, on an isotonic wafter, fished out at 33 wraps. I came back one wrap in the dark, just to make it a little bit easier, and baited up closer as well. And um, this is the result. So for today and tonight, more rods are going onto the isotonic. Obviously I'm gonna stay out long with two, fish the other one a little bit shorter, um, but for now, an absolute result. To get a couple of bites on the first night, I am well, well chuffed. Mm 
gua. Well, how about that for a way to get off the mark? 49.12, caught over a big bed of link with a 20 mil link waft that soaked in squid goo as hook bait on my favorite loops and boom combi rig. Been quite a few bites around the lake already. We could not have got off to a better start. When I set my rods up yesterday, I had two similar baiting plans with a, with a slight difference. The two rods fishing out at 22 wraps were baited with 22 spawns of bait, and that's the rod that I had the bite on. So it made sense today to reset it exactly the same. The rod out to the left, I baited yesterday with 11 spawns of bait and spread a few boilies with the throwing stick, but because that's not done anything, no signs of life, no liners, I did put a few spawns over the top of the hook bait and just a few boilies with the stick, but nowhere near as many as yesterday because I'm convinced the fish haven't visited there. Just a matter of time though, I think, before they do turn up. Someone who did manage to bank a 50 overnight was Big Frank Carussier, fishing opposite me in swim four. New PB. A 55 pound common on your first bite is absolutely mental and a new PB makes it even more special. It shows what can be done if you get the spot and the tactics dead right on these kind of waters. Also off to a great start is Marco in swim 13. Marco is fishing 22 wraps out to a gravel patch he found on the first afternoon, proving that careful interrogation of the swim with a marker lead is essential at the start of the week. He had this lovely scaly mirror just before first light on a snowman rig made from a link bottom bait and a Bonoffi pop-up over about one and a half kilos of link boilies. If you've had a bite on these kind of waters, it's safe to assume most of your bait has been eaten. So his plan for today is to spawn another kilo of link all over the gravel patch. So if the fish come back tonight, there's just enough bait out there to get another bite. This trip isn't just a jolly up and some serious chat goes on when the lads aren't fishing. And with the rain absolutely pouring down, it was a good opportunity for some of the guys to retreat to some shelter and have their team meetings. One person not present was Joseph from Hungary, fishing between me and Marco in swim 14. He was too busy playing a very angry carp. Even though this is nothing like a competition, all the guys feel the pressure to catch at the start of the week. So when that first carp goes in the net, the relief is written all over their face. It was a 37 pounder, so it's a great fish for the beginning. I'm really happy about this. I have found a uh, really great gravel bank at 28 uh, wraps on my left side. Uh, I'm using um, the link in the 18 millimeters and uh, I've caught him on a 12 millimeter pop-up with isotonic and pineapple goo. I chose swim 15 based on what I saw showing out there. I got here a day before the rest of the guys to sort of get as much information as I possibly could off the anglers that are already fishing here. This swim did do a bite the night before I got here, but at much closer range than where I'm fishing. Um, but that was another really good sign. And the fish show on this particular lake in this area, out in what we call the Bermuda Triangle, which is beyond everybody's casting range. There used to be trees sunk out there to stop you fishing into it. Um, and they've all been taken out. The owners, Olivier and Nicole, have put a load of effort into getting those trees out of the way. And where I'm fishing on the long rods is actually beyond where a tree used to be. They're actually there to stop the carp anglers fishing in the middle of the lake. And what happened, all the fish migrate out to the middle of the lake. So because they've stopped people using boats, the fish are definitely now getting caught a lot closer because people can't bait at distance. So all the baits fall in between 80 and sort of 120 meters. And that's where the fish are most of the time if they're feeding. They do show out long during the day. They're not really catchable out there because they're so far out. And personally, I'd much rather fish over bait and fish slightly shorter and get the fish coming to me out of that safe area and feeding regularly, you know, and then building a hit that way. Just flinging singles at them a million miles out will get bites, but I don't think you're ever going to build a hit that way. So before I started, because I didn't know the swim at all and I didn't know how much of that woodwork had actually been removed out there, I used my new spod rod. It's a 13 foot prototype spod rod, which is an absolute animal of a rod. I used that with a four ounce marker lead with no coating on it and I basically whacked it out 35 wraps. It's landed probably about a rod length and a bit short of the island and then I've pulled it back from there to see what it's like out there. It's gravel right by the island. 
then it goes smooth, that sort of sandy sort of clay stuff, then back onto little strips of gravel, more soft stuff. But I pulled it all the way in along the bottom just to see if there are any trees left out there that the lead would bump over and I'd know there was a snag in the way. Did that probably half a dozen, maybe 10 times. You know, it takes a serious effort, you know, to get a lead out that far, you know, and actually feel what it's like on the bottom. But it's important to do that on day one, know what you're fishing into and what you're fishing over. Um, and I'm pleased to say there's no snags left out there from what I can see at all. So I can fish with 033 tapered line with confidence. I'm fishing very tight, keeping the line off the bottom as well and playing the fish hard too. Um, but I just want to make sure that I'm not fishing over a tree that I'm going to get constantly snagged up on or cut off on when I'm playing a fish. So 20 spawns went out of mixed link boilers. I've got 10 mils, 15s and 18s. They go into the medium spawn really well. I put 20 out. I started putting them out at 140. Um, that's 35 wraps. And when I come to do the fishing rods, you know, I was struggling to hit it hard. You know, I was just about hitting the clip, but it wasn't hard enough. And if you don't hit it hard enough, obviously you're dropping short of your bait and also the rig can tangle. So I came back to 34, that made the difference and I was hitting it hard enough. Wasn't really feeling the lead down at that range. There's a little bit of a crosswind as well when I started, um, but I knew if I hit the clip hard and it was down, that was fine. Prior to that, I did actually put a marker float on that same rod, the 13 foot spod rod, and managed to get a marker float all the way out there by stepping into the cast, just to make sure how deep it was, because the lead on its own was down so quickly because the braid is so thin, and you've got such a huge loop in the air, you know, as it's, as it's sailing out there to hit the clip, and it's sort of nine to 10 foot out there, um, and sort of gravelly in most of the places. I imagine there's this like a gravel slope coming off of that island. And um, I should continue fishing two rods out long tonight. I'll put isotonic wafters on both rods because that's what I got the bites on last night. The closer rod is on a strip of gravel that sort of, the back edge of it starts at 24 and a half wraps. So I'm fishing just on the back edge of it. That sort of area did the 55 pounder the night before I got here. Um, and even though I've not had a bite on that last night, I'm going to keep persevering with that area because if I can get bites off of two areas, you know, they can maybe get sort of two or three bites every night. Um, if they're all coming from one, recasting in the dark at 33, 34 wraps is problematic. You never get it right first time. You know, there's lots of splashing going on out there. You've got a spom out there as well. You know, so I can imagine just getting a rod back out on the money is probably really scaring the fish away. But after each fish, I do put 10 or 15 spawns back out and I'm trying to work that area and draw them into it more and more, get them onto this link more and more. And hopefully later in the week, I'll be able to swap over to match the hatch hook baits and maybe snare a monster. Myself and Matthias are fishing in swim 10. It's a massive swim out on a point with loads of open water and an island margin. Plus, it's known for doing big uns. I arrived on the Friday straight from a monster carp shoot, so after a brief chat with the lads that had fished there the previous week, I knew roughly where they'd been catching from. A nice clean area at around about 20 wraps. Last year at Parco, Matthias was lucky enough to have Pecky on hand for a bit of casting tuition and rig tying. He's from Poland, so his carp fishing experience is a little less than most of the other guys in the team, so it's a great opportunity for him to hone his skills. He picked it up really well and was really keen to learn more, so I set about interrogating his swim to find some likely looking spots. I've got an idea where we'll end up fishing, but interestingly, normally you get a lot of people, myself included, you look for, look for the gravel in a swim because yeah. you know everything's yeah, presented. My yeah. friend was actually on the lake last week and he was fishing an area, up the other end admittedly, but he was yeah. fishing an area that sort of ran from soft stuff into gravel. Mm -hmm. He couldn't catch on the gravel. Okay. It was the softer stuff. I don't know where that's where, that, if that's where the food's collecting, could if be. they're more used to treating areas on the gravel as, as sort of danger, yeah, so be. they're eating yeah. in the softer yeah. stuff. Yeah. So rather than 100% go straight on the gravel, we'll have a little look around. If you can find that area where the soft stuff meets the gravel, mm -hmm. that can often be okay. a really yeah, good spot to look yeah, for. Yeah. There's a lot of people on the lake, so we can't go too far right and I can't go too far left, but we've still got lots of water. Yeah. And even in, if you like, your section of the swim, there's probably so many ups and downs and bumps and features. It's worth just a real good lead around yeah. to find what we've got in front of us and, and to pick an, pick an area to go for. Now look at the tip now. Yeah, I can see that it, is, yeah. it was proper aggressive yeah, gravel. Exactly, yeah. And you know, I always think then that's when you're coming over real big lumps. And I always think, my, you know, my, my rig could get lodged behind it, mm -hmm. almost hidden. Yep. When I like to fish on gravel, it's when it, you feel the, 
the lead bouncing across mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. smoothly, it's like a pea shingle. Yeah. Right, well I, I've wrapped it up at 25, just to give us an idea, because I knew that's going tight to the island, but at 25, it's that coarse gravel, we're probably three or four rod lengths short of the island. Okay. I actually think we want to come shorter still, but it's about you casting, not me. <laughs> All the rigs, mate. No worries. <laughs> Do you want a finger still? That's braid. Uh, I know you're clearly a big man, but that can still hurt, trust me. A bare marker lead on a stiff marker rod and braided reel line will tell you as much as possible about your swim, and after maybe 20 casts, we settled on an area at about 90 yards. We found a lovely scene between bumpy gravel and smooth silt, and going off my mate's success from last week, I think that's the best place to start. I redid the rods at about three o'clock today because I didn't foresee much happening in the day. There was nothing happening in front of me, so I wanted to get everything reset, ready for the night ahead. Lo and behold, I think the rigs have been back in position for about an hour. Had a bit of a nothing take on the middle rod, just pulled up tight, played this fish in. It did a really big kite. I'll be honest, I, I think I knew it was a grass carp pretty early on. Didn't feel too much. They tend to come straight in and not do too much until they get in the net. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to go mad. Keep that net up, keep that net up. Oh my God. This one was true to form in the net. It's a big grass cart, weighed it at 49 pound, but it beat me up royally and I didn't even get a catch shot. <laughs> no grassy. Grass cart one, spooner, nil. Once you get past about nine o'clock in the morning, it feels like not too much is going to happen. Maybe if you're out long in between the islands, there could be the odd bite coming from there. It looks like it's going to be a case at the moment of just making sure that everything is primed and set to perfection for that nighttime period when they're more likely to leave their safe area and start snuffling on a few boilies. Oh, someone's having a bit of me time. Come on, Fairbrass, get out of your pit. Absolute ripper on the uh, same rod that's produced the other bites. I think it's um, just that they're coming to this rod first. When they come out the Bermuda Triangle, this is where they go. right underneath the other rods. Next. Yes, get in! Yeah! What a result. Look at that. Yeah, man. 45 pounds of Twas Hill perfection. Thank you, my darling. Off you go to get bigger. Spooner's combination of heavy baiting with link boilie and a 20 mil wafter over the top was clearly working as he landed another chunky common. What an unbelievable start to the session. A big 40 this morning and now a 50 pound eight ounce common. I'm always one to make little changes. Two bites on the spin could be telltale enough. Won't be long for I've got two 20 millers out there. It wasn't until just before first light that Spooner was in again. With spooners safely in the retainer, I was in on the left-hand rod, and as usual, it was causing me all sorts of problems. Absolute shredder of a take. Has got that rod. I had to fish super tight lines to keep them away from any snags that may still be on the lake bed. These fish were kiting a long way left and right in the darkness, so they just kept on picking up my other rods. Oh, what? Palava. In the end, I had to open the bow arms on the other rods so the fish would come in close enough to slide into the net. Big mirror, getting that net. Bosh, got him! Yes! That's a good mirror, that. Oh. 
Or look at him, a relative baby for the lake. 31 pound, 10 ounces, a very hard fight in mirror. There were, however, yet another couple of chunks last night. Dan's got one and Frank's got one round in peg four. Yeah, 53 pounder, look at that. Well, well chuffed. And the best bit of all, it was on the short spot, 24 and a half wraps. And you can see the southerly wind has got up now and it's gonna be impossible to get back out to the island. So all three are gonna go at 24 and a half today. Gonna to have a good marker around first, put a lot more bait out, loads of link again, and um, see if we can snare some more big ones tonight. But uh, for now, I am over the moon. What a carp. Frank is fishing at 28 and 31 wraps out of swim four. He's gone for a slightly different approach to most of the other guys, using spinner rigs with standard link pop-ups. This tactic is certainly working as he got an early morning wake-up call from this super long 58 pound mirror. When I start to fish with quite big hook baits like I am here, a sort of 20 to 22 mil, I prefer a little bit more separation between, um, between the hook and the bait. That's when my loops and boom combi rig comes in. Started using it quite a few years ago when fishing on Gigantica, and I felt that having a presentation that allowed me to cast as far as I needed to, having that stiff boom section, it's got great anti-tangle properties, but also it's got incredibly good resetting properties. No matter how good your rig is, we've seen it on underwater footage over the years that carp do get away with it time and time again. And it's important to have a rig that when they do pick it up, and they do get away with it. As they eject the rig, it's then pushed away and it's ready to go again. Now in this situation, I'm fishing over what could be, it's mud or quite, quite firm silt, hard to pinpoint it exactly, but the helicopter system gives me the, the confidence that should my lead sink into it slightly by having the beads separated by about three inches, during flight, the rig is coming to the top bead, and as the lead goes down, that's hitting the bottom, my rig comes down slowly after, and because my hook bait is balanced, it all pushes away, and it's sitting there absolutely prime, ready to go. Now I tie my own, always have done. I favor a crank size four hook for almost all of my fishing. The boom section's incredibly simple. I literally have a couple of crimped loops either end, one so that I can quick change it onto a swivel, and then another one much smaller, which is where the loop system comes in. That loop section, tying it short enough, can be really, really fiddly. So they are now available in a ready-tied form too. You can buy some ready-tied booms in five and a half and seven and a half inches, and then there's a couple of hook options as well. You can get them in crank, barbed and barbless in sizes four, six, and eight, and you can also get them in wide gape X barbed and barbless in four, six, and eight. Those sizes will cover just about any bait option you might want to put on, any fishing situation that you're faced with. And even now, yes, I tie my own, but I would, with confidence, without doubt, use those ready ties, and I have done in the past, straight out of the packet, out they go, and I sit there with the confidence that I'm fishing effectively. And should Mr. 60 Pounder come along later and uh, pick up one of my hook baits, there's only one result. It gets in my net. With bite time over in my swim, it was a great opportunity to go and have a catch up with the guys around the lake, talking all things Calder, especially what products are coming out and what they'd like to see in the range. It's great to chew the fat with the guys from other countries and hear how their angling culture differs from ours, because then we can adjust things to incorporate everyone. The time absolutely flew by, so armed with a few new tactics, I was off back to my swim to get the bait out for the night ahead. in the process of uh, getting 30 medium spawns out there. Mixture of link boilies, all three sizes, 10, 15, 18. Wind's dropping down now. I'm half tempted to fish a rod still long, but the plan was to fish all three at 24 and a half. I've had a good plum round out there. And um, basically the strip of gravel starts at sort of 24 and three quarters. So that's, that's where I've gone out to. 
just a quarter of a rod length further than where I got the bite. But the middle rod, most interestingly, is quite soft where I'm spawning now. Um, there must be a little alcove or something out there. Um, a sort of a soft bit with a couple of, you know, I mean, maybe the gravel sort of scoops in in sort of a crescent shape. But um, being right on the edge of it, rather than slap bang in the middle of it, I think is always a, a better place to be. Um, if I do fish three rods all at the same range, it would be interesting to see if those fish that are living out in the Bermuda Triangle during the day, if they do come in and get on that bait, um, obviously there won't be a long rod out there to cut the shorter rods off, so that should help, but it's tempting to have a long rod out there because the bites come early on the longer rods. So, 10 more of these. Nice. Um, and I'm going to put 10, uh, half a rod length to a rod length past it, just to create a little bit of a trail in. It's always nice to think the fish come in, they get a few free mouthfuls of food uh, and um, work their way up to the main baited area. By then they're pretty confident, they're enjoying the taste of it, and then they're sort of not as not as cautious, and um, hopefully then you snare them. But if I do fish all three at the same range tonight, I suspect the bites won't happen until later. But it'll be a good experiment. Um, if I do get the bites earlier than I expect, then I can stay at this range and not have to kill myself getting out to that island. But, um, if I don't, say nothing happens tonight, then uh, I know I've got to go back out long no matter what. Um, but fishing at the edge of your ability, and I am out of practice with this sort of long range fishing, it is taxing. Things do go wrong. I've cracked a couple of spawns off already. You know, I failed to hit the mark quite a few times in the dark last night, and every miscast you feel like you're ruining it for all the rods. So, because um, I was expecting it to be windier, I'm thinking, I'll hang back today, fish well at 24 and three quarters rather than so-so at 33 and um, see what happens. The third evening felt proper carpy. And now the week was in full swing, we were all baited up well before last light, which can often get you an early take. Some of the lads were lucky enough to be fishing close to the chow tent so they didn't have to wind in to eat. Iron was fishing just up the bank in swim 12, which he's hardly ever fished. What he was about to catch was going to make that swim look a lot more attractive in the future. That's a proper chunk. He's a unit. <laughs> oh, great, mate. I guess just one of the big ones. Big ones. <laughs> I was just thinking, that's no bream, man. <laughs> I straight away knew it was a big one, but not uh, one of the biggest uh, in the lake, but I was totally amazed because it, it is big. And the fight of the fish was that, that awful. It was like a bream. So it, there was a bite like bleep, bleep. That's why the bream is massive. Man. And uh, after a few minutes of lifting that bream, I saw it. Oh no, it's a, it's a common, it's a big common. And then straight away I netted it. So there, there is no fight of the fish. It was so quickly. So that's that's shameful for the filming, of course, but uh, yeah, it happens. Sorry. So, right, what we're going to do, we we'll hold it up and just try and see if we can just get into slightly shallower water. Oh, that's it. And then lift it and get on top of your head so it goes perfectly still, yeah? yeah. And then we'll get a decent weight and just. Calm down. Yeah, just make sure it's completely off the mat. Go on. Oh. It's close mate, it's close, let's just let it calm down. Is it definitely off the mat? Yeah. Best number there is, 69. Exactly. <laughs> 69! <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that PB, bruv? It is. Yeah, man. Thanks. Very welcome. Well done, bruv. That's it, man. That's, That's it, it, man. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> this is where we're coming for. This is carp fishing, man. <laughs>
everything is in big proportions. The, the, the building of the, the belly, uh, the, the portion of the, the length, of course, and the mouth is so enormous. It's, it's just unbelievable. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, that's the one, man. Yes. <laughs> uh. Bit of chat, mate. Yeah, chat, chat about what? Have a look at this, man. What can you say? It's a new PB. What a perfect comment. Oh. I love carp fishing. You can go back now. Lovely. <laughs> Turned out to be a hectic night with fish being caught all round the lake. Yeah. Yeah. Come on! And the first one done. Good, Julian. Really happy, guys. I am really happy. Work for it. Get it. Uh, yeah, I do have uh, enjoyed uh, the time over here. Lovely to see all the guys uh, uh, every year uh, and have a social on the water side. That's uh, the that's perfect combination, of course. Uh, my approach was uh, there is some snacks in here, um, find the, the patch for the fish um, and feed, feed on there and just fish it um, with one rod uh, and not in the snacks where everybody will fish if they fish in this swim, but uh, fishing uh, after the, the snacks. That was my approach. I started off uh, putting in uh, one and a half kilo of uh, boilies in. Um, and the next day I topped it up with roughly a kilo and I uh, keep to that up till I get a bite. Uh, still the same bait and just uh, pop it up with a, with a max of a kilo bait. And that was um, uh, for the first days of the trip. Yeah, the, the, the rig I've used uh, is already tied. Cock system, uh, a light one, that's also a flat a light one. Two and a half OZ um, and um, a boom section straight out of the package with a loop, uh, wide gape, barbless, four, also loop, so it's a loop to loop. Um, the only thing I uh, did um, swap during the week was the um, uh, bottom bait and topped up with a pop up, just a simple pop up. Everybody's catching with a white pop-up, so it's good. So I swapped that. Um, the only thing I needed was uh, uh, an extension of the, the hair. Uh, so I used bait floss um, and uh, burned it off. And then, uh, yeah, that, that's the rig. That did the trick for me this week. Ian has proved that no swim is a complete write-off. On pressured lakes like Toisille, some of the bigger, wiser residents will often live away from all the pressure of casting and baiting. These really big carp have very slow metabolisms, just like an old person, so they don't need to eat a lot to maintain their weight. So Ion's approach of light baiting and keeping things really quiet in the swim has really made the most of it. Top angling and richly deserved, especially seeing as he's got to leave the lake early to get back to his family. The lake's really rocking now. Spooner and myself caught consistently over the first couple of nights, and then last night the action dried up for both of us, probably because the fish didn't move down the lake in that direction. With the whole lake covered, one man's loss is another's gain, and Hervoye, or Harry as we call him, has got off the mark with two lovely looking mirrors. Harry's a top carp match angler, and he and his partner Dalibor are actually ranked number one match pair in the world. This means when the fish turn up, his tactics will work for sure. Jim Freak Mateus in swim 10 has kept plugging away on his spots, and with a little help from Spooner, he's had his first fish of the week. Look at that, 41 and a half pounds of beautiful French mirror. 
my new personal best. Got it on the loops and booms with a crank size four. We had a little bit of chat with Neil yesterday about my rigs. We did some changes and that's the result. Beautiful. Big Frank fishing opposite me in Swim 4 has been the most consistent so far this week, catching loads of monsters. Last night's tipped the scales at just over 50 pound. It doesn't stop there for Frank. Early this morning he was into another. This one not so big, but who cares when they look like this. The crazy Italian Davide also got off the mark last night with a great looking mirror. It's mine. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Come on. Joseph has also made the most of Swim 14, another unfancied area. After catching on the first morning from a gravel spot of 28 wraps to the left of his swim, he decided to reposition all his rods onto the same spot. It's proven to be a good move as this morning he's landed another cracking mirror. Last, but by no means least, it's Julien. He's fishing in Swim 6. This swim controls an area of water that just screams carp. With access to two islands and a likely looking patrol route, it was only a matter of time before he got off the mark. Welcome to my first fish of the week. After two days blanking, only two brim. And on the same road, 64 pounds. Uh, it, it's always something very special to have a fish um, as long as, as this one. I didn't catch uh, a fish like that every year. So when you, you have to leave something like that, or just the, uh, the biggest feeling is the, when you get a bite, you take the, the rod, get the contact, you can feel that it's not a 20 plus, it's, it's very more than that. The second feeling is when you, she's hitting the surface, and you want to put the net and sh his head um, touch the arm of the net of the left and his tail on the right and <laughs> she cannot get in so and you can see the fish after in the net and it, it's completely crazy uh, the moment where you lift it it's the um, uh, the end of the sensation but it's very cool to share it with all of the crew It's, it's uh, and everything, it's not only one thing, it's not only the, to be in front of the picture, it's the bite and it's everything. Spent a really interesting couple of hours round at Frank's swim and Julien's as well. Most of his carp have been big and he's using the link pop-ups um, with no goo on them, no extra flavour on them, nothing at all. And he's basically said that he feels the fish have been so pressured all through the summer um, that having a higher track hook bait on um, can put the fish off. You can't argue with his results. Um, his left hand rod's fished out at 32 wraps, which is 128 yards and his middle and right hand rod are running at 28. He's fishing there basically because Julien caught a lot of fish there two years ago at 28, uh, and most of his fish have come from that rod. Interestingly, he's baited another rot spot further right with only maize and hemp, and maybe a little bit of pellet, trying to draw the bream and the grass carp into that area. Um, and he's actually caught carp from that area and caught no bream. That's something that you can definitely employ in your fishing if you are on a lake where you've got those other species and you maybe haven't got the hook baits and stuff to get around it. Over the, the couple of rods that are in the centre of the swim, six kilos or more of boilies, some hemp as well. And I asked him if he was worried about um, the, the hemp bringing in the bream and he said no. And um, actually the rods he's put the hemp out on haven't produced any bream. So, um, you know, and both him and Julien think that there's so many boilies going to this lake, the bream are probably more switched on to boilie um, than, than they are onto the hemp. You have to take notice of what he's doing 
and uh, it's certainly something I'm going to put in my armoury for the future. Experienced big fish anglers like Frank and Julien are super switched on to the right tactics on these French commercial venues, so we'd be fools to ignore what they're doing. Some of the guys are sticking to their own plans and some, like Spooner, are adapting to what's working for them. He's decided to fish two rods with the same 20 mil link wafters as they're really doing the business for him this week. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is brutal this. It didn't take long for the bites to start with Matthew into his first fish and this one was properly pulling back. Sadly after getting it all the way in he got cut off on an unseen snag down the margin. Harry fishing to my left in swim 16 was into a fish. It kited well right and found the snag tree halfway between us. Harry let off the pressure and the carp started moving again and after some tense moments he pulled it free of the snags. Good skills, Harry. Come on! Ah, oh, yeah, it's a good one. 51 pound. Yeah, 51 pound. The fish had clearly turned up in Matthew's swim and he was in again. This time he managed to get the fish in the net, making him one very happy man. Get it. Ha ha ha! As you can imagine, I'm really happy with this fish. Uh, I was waiting a long time for it, and then when it happened, I was very stoked. 52 and a half. So that will be somewhere between 47 and 48 pounds. That's a big fish. It's bigger than I expected. After three blank nights, finally success of the fortnight. Look at this beautiful 47 pound mirror. Caught from the right hand side of my swim. Beautiful, very happy with this one. Yesterday, I cast out really close to the island and when I reeled in, I got snagged. There is quite some nylon around the island, so I decided to stay half a rod length further out from the bank and a bit more to the right of the, of, of the right-hand corner of the island. Uh, I had a mixture of link 15, 18 millers with crushed uh, link in it. Uh, about six bombs went over it and I fished over it with a cork dust pop-up link. Not any goo, just match the hatch on a uh, size 4 crank spinner. Yeah. There were a couple more guys to get off the mark last night. Anthony, fishing in swim 1, had a 42 pound mirror. He had it on an essential cell wafter topped with some fake corn presented on a spinner rig. Anthony kept on his spots and continued to feed just a little link every day and when the fish turned up, he nailed them. Daniel Stern fishing at the other end of the lake in swim eight also got off the mark overnight. So that's my first fish, 32 pounder. I'm very happy to be out of the mark. Hopefully there's to come more. Send your big brother, please. Although not the biggest fish in the world, it's a sure sign that his change of tactics are working. I'm fishing on 20 reps the first two days on a clean spot on a gravel bank. And um, I changed it last Saturday evening because I had no bite. And uh, now fishing on 19 and a half reps. So uh, there's a border to the, to the silt and to the, to the mud. And now I get a bite. I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm fishing a spinner rig with a Crank 4 Kamakura on it. I had a bottom bait, link, 80 millimeters, and uh, Banoffi pop-up, the white limited edition, on top as a snowman. It's been another disappointing night for me, and with Harry next door now getting regular bites, I wanted to go and have a chat with him to hear more about his tactics. Yes, Harry. Hey. <laughs> Get him, mate. Well done. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. And how big? Uh, 51 pounds. 
Nice. Yeah, big one. So the, the blank of Parco is yeah, gone. It's gone. It's, it's history. Gone. Yeah. It's history. Yeah. <clears throat> Which rod? Uh, left hand rod. Right. By yeah. the island or out on the boat? No, no, no. Out uh, exactly where I'm feeding on my baiting spot. So right. Just straight. Where the two fish came from the night yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fish were showing there yesterday afternoon, weren't they? So, yeah, 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 yeah. It looked good. I'm, I'm really pleased that you've, as we say, stayed on target, stayed yeah. on the spot, kept yeah. feeding the spot, because the old brain was going, wasn't it? The first couple yeah. of days, you were two like... Two nights, two days, nothing. I was thinking what I'm doing, you know. But, you know, in the end, you just need to go keep doing what you're doing. And... Yeah. It's, we're big fish fishing. It's not like the, the match fishing that you do in Croatia, yeah. is it? Where there's yeah. thousands and thousands of yeah. fish. Yeah, yeah, it's different. You know? There you have to be impatient, don't yeah, you? If you don't catch in two hours, you are crazy. You know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but but here it's different. And then, yeah, you know, yeah. 15 of us around the lake, you can't all be catching every night. There's not enough fish in here to do that. There's lots of big fish, but there's not thousands of fish, yeah. you know? So yeah. They just moved to another, another part of the lake or something. Yeah, I, th I think what's happening is there, as they get caught, it's moving them between anglers. So they get mm -hmm. caught, right, I'm not happy here. We go over there, or we get caught there, or we're not happy here, they go over yeah, there. Yeah. You know, like Anthony's caught, isn't he, last night? Mm. Maurice has lost one, and Matthew's caught one behind the island. Yes. So it's almost like they've just moved over that way, so. Could be. But I heard it got snagged up, is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fish took my line from the reel, like yeah, 20 yeah. meters, and went right, there was a tree there. I yeah, thought, yeah. oh no, not there, and just stopped. <sighs> yeah, I was, I was. I thought I'm going to lose it. You could it. feel it in the tree, could you? You'd yeah, feel it great I could feel it. So I thought I'm going to slowly maybe just give in a little bit. So f sometimes the fish, when it stop, doesn't feel a pressure as much of the line, they stop swimming. Yes. So I did it like, you know, a little bit and I tried to pull and it went, went out of the, the snag. Right. Yeah, Scott was, went, went to get the, the boat, but when he was close here, I, I just told him, sorry, mate, it's... it's not sorry, yeah, but no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm playing it, so. That's wicked, man. That's wicked. Manage it to, to land it in the end. <laughs> Here on this leg, I didn't catch for two days and two nights, but I. I didn't change my tactics. I, I was doing uh, uh, the same thing all the time. Maybe just a little change of hook bait to, 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 to try to find the right one. Uh, the reason is, uh, you, basically I was, I was uh, looking around the leg, seeing that not many fish were caught. Uh, so uh, I, I was pretty sure the fish didn't come to my swim. So I was basically waiting for them to come. I uh, had three different hook baits. So when I caught the fish on first hook bait, I just, automatically switched the, another rod on that hook bait. So the same nice night I caught another fish on that other rod. So then I was sure I was doing the right thing. So I just um, continued doing it and I'm sure I, I'm positive I'm gonna catch some more. Yes, Harry. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm using IQ D rig with a Curve Shant X size four. That's a rig I have most confidence in. So when I'm leg like this, we're not sure what to do. I I just stick to the stuff that I have most confidence in. Well, I'm using um, a 18 millimeter uh, link from the bag plus a white uh, white pop up. Uh, I'm trimming off both of boilies. There are two reasons for that. First reason is uh, some, for some extra attraction, and the second reason they just you sit perfectly each, to each other uh, like snowmen, and it's, it's not really balanced. It's something in between. It, it, it's a side, so it's not balanced boil. It's not bottom boil. It's something in between. My assessment thus far of Twazio in the autumn. Priority number one is the spot that you're going to fish and for me it's been very long range for me um, and also sort of medium range where my bites have come from. The next priority is your baiting, what you put in, how much you put in, what time of day you put it in and then the third thing is the rig. You know there have been bites all the way around the lake 
loads of different rigs have been employed and they have all worked. So in this situation, you know, the spot is, you know, long distance for me. It's at the edge, edge of my ability. Um, I started at 34 wraps, I've come back to 33 to make it a little bit easier. So just over 130 yards out. And when you're constructing a rig to suit that style of fishing, um, the first priority is it has to cast a long way and it must go out there without tangling. So without doubt, a helicopter rig is the number one rig for fishing at distance. And in this situation, you know, because we're using four and a half ounce leads to get out there, dumping the lead on the take um, really helps. Um, the fish can't use the lead as they're shaking the head. The lead's not swinging backwards and forwards and it, wouldn't, it won't pull the hook out. Um, because it's already come off. I'm using a short dark matter leader because lead core is not allowed on here. So it's one of the 50 centimetre leaders and they cast better than the metre long leaders, definitely. I think if you can shorten everything down in your rig and make it as minimal as possible, the whole thing will cast further. I've converted it so it's got heli safe on the bottom. I'm cutting the swivel off the distance lead as well. That stops any wobble in the casting and brings everything closer together. So the hook link is as close to the central mass of lead as possible. Um, so the hooking efficiency is as good as it can possibly be. I'm using a no trace system with the little collar just up from the lead because the lead's not plummeting into any soft bottom. It's nice and hard and gravelly out there on all three spots. Um, so I can keep the two really close together um, and that absolutely sails out there. The only time I've wound any tangles in is when I haven't hit the clip. And that's something I see a lot of anglers doing, you know, in their fishing. They don't hit the clip quite hard enough or they don't hit it at all and then they leave the rig out there. And to me, that is a recipe for disaster. If you've not hit the clip, it's not thrown the rig out straight um, as it's got to where you want it to go. Everything can be back up the leader or back up the tubing um, and it's sitting out there tangled. So it's so important to hit the clip hard and I will recast and recast until I get it absolutely right. I was using the spinner rig all the time with a boom hook link and um, I got a couple of hook pulls at Gigantica a couple of weeks ago and I moved over to the system I'm using now, back to my old favourite hybrid stiff um, with a little tiny bit stripped back near the hook and every fish was absolutely nailed. So I've employed that tactic here again and um, the same has happened, four bites, four fish in the net. I've got complete confidence that when I do get a take, I am gonna land that carp. And that's so, so important, especially with big fish like this, fishing out at range. So I'm fishing the hook link quick change style, so I don't have to keep cutting the dark matter leader on. So I've got a size eight quick change swivel, a loop in the end of the hook link that's crimped on. If you crimp that hybrid stiff material and put, crimp it down really tight, you get a brilliant breaking strain out of it. And just to cover up that quick change swivel, I'm just using one of the four mil rubber beads. It covers up the crook, keeps it really, really neat. The hook I'm calling claw. Basically, it's a, a hybrid of a wide gape hook um, and also probably a curved shank with a little bit longer shank, a very heavily interned eye. And it's basically to recreate a wide gape X hook if you put a bit of shrink tube on the bottom of it or a kicker. So you don't need to do that anymore because the eye is sweeping around so much and you pull it across your hand, it flips over and catches hold every single time. Tying that on with my favorite whipping knot and then I've got a soft hair and that's just held in place with just one overhand knot around a small rig ring and it's right up by where the barb would be. I'm, I'm basically crimping the barb down so it snaps off because it's a barbless rule on here that sort of area of the hook is where I want the hair leaving so it flips over and catches hold. And the bites have come on two different hook baits. So the first few came on a 15 mil IB wafter soaked in isotonic goo. When you're starting a session, if you're putting bait out, I always have a high tracked hook bait over the baited area just to see if I can snare early bites before the fish come in and really root around and eat everything. And that's produced the first three fish for me. And then the big fish, the 53, um, came on a link bottom bait, drilled out with a little bit of cork in it, just tipped off uh, with a bit of plastic corn. Again, it's the IB plastic corn, but this time I've soaked it in the garlic goo, which is another one of my favourites. Doesn't really change the colour of it, but you can really smell the garlic on it. So I will swap her hook baits around, you know, if I, if I get problems with bream, you know, or I feel like um, I'm still catching the smaller fish in the swim, then I may put match the hatch hook baits on as well. Um, but for now, that's the tactics that I'm employing that are working. Like I say, something going out there that sails out beautifully, that doesn't tangle, you know, that turns and catches hold every single time is what I recommend for this style of fishing. It was no surprise that the afternoon soon passed without so much as a bleep on anyone's rods. 
Most of the bites are coming through the night, which makes me think the carp are certainly holding up in the Bermuda Triangle throughout the day, an area totally out of reach for 99% of anglers. The guys are baited up and ready to rock well before darkness. They now know that the carp will soon be on the move, so having all the traps set early will definitely get them more action. The dreaded bream were on the feed as soon as the light faded, but the anglers that fed through them eventually caught carp. It was no surprise that Harry was the first to connect with a proper fish, as he's fishing pretty close to the Bermuda Triangle. He's baiting the same spot every day, which is training the fish to visit him every night. Anything he doesn't catch one night, he's probably coming back the next for another feed. Not long after, Davide was also into what sounded like a really good fish. Come on, I got the second one. Come on, guys. Love this game. In the middle of the night, Spooner ends up being dragged down the bank. It's always tense times when it feels like a proper big un. Spooner kept his call, let the rod do the work, and eventually slid the mirror into the net. Spooner's night wasn't over yet. Just as dawn broke, he was into another one. A little bit of proof in the pudding there. A couple of days ago, I talked about switching both rods over to the, the sort of the going tactic for out there. I've done that, and this is the first time that I've had two bites off of that spot. This is on a different rod, so the, the sort of middle and right have both done bites this time, and it's after changing both to those bigger squid infused link hook baits. Fish number four, same bait, same rig, same area, beautiful 36 pound mirror, happy days. Davide, fishing in swim seven, made some small adjustments to where he was fishing yesterday, and this gave him a great result to reflect on. I am really happy, really, really excited to have this kind of fish in my hand. Wow, thanks God to give me, and thanks to my half work. My plan was changing by the day before. I have moved my right, my right hand rod on the left, completely on the left, so I completely forgot the right side of the island, as I have also Julian uh, close to me, so it was obvious that that rod will never get one bite. So I tried to block the pass between the bank and the island on my left, and that's pay. And my loop section with the boom section, with the wide gate packs number four, and my balanced wafter link size 18 mil, with a fake pop-up corn, yellow one, bring me the result. That was probably one of the most out of the blue bites I've ever had in my life. I did see a fish show out there this morning. I think my major mistake was I've been feeding small baits the whole time and quite a lot of them. If I had my time again, I would only feed with probably 18s and 24 millers, uh, which is not ideal for spobbing, but um, you know that's the way it goes. Uh, sometimes you have to overcome these obstacles during the session. Um, the fight itself was uh, pretty hairy, you know, having not had a bite for a good few days now. Um, you know, I knew it wasn't a big one, but uh, I really, really wanted to get it in. So uh, I'm sure you could see the concentration on my face. Tipped over the dorsal once, really close in. And my heart was in my mouth because I thought I'd lost it, but the hook was absolutely buried. It really wanted that 24 miller. 
Yes! Oh, thank God for that. So the good news is I've got a tactic that works, that avoids the bream. I can employ that again tonight. It's got windy again. There's no way I'm going to get 24 millers into the wind 33 wraps. So I'm going to have to come back a little bit closer. But I'll just assess it later on today when the wind's died down. But for now, I think the word I will use to describe uh, my current state of mind is relieved. 27, 12, yeah. There we go. Not the biggest one, but very, very welcome. I don't mind telling you that I was a broken man this morning. I've had three days of non-stop bream action. And when you're casting out 130 yards, um, which is a struggle for me, um, and having to bait at that range as well, and then you're getting annihilated by bream time after time, it does wear you down. I've had next to no sleep. I basically put 24 mil gobstoppers on, completely different bait to what I'm feeding, white bonoffi, slow sinkers, put two rods back out. Both of them sort of went off the spot really, they weren't perfect, but it was pitch black. I came back a rod length as well to 32 wraps because I knew I wouldn't cast the 24 mil that far. Um, and this is the result, 27 pound 12. Um, and hopefully this means I can carry on fishing that same style. It's getting windy again now, so it's going to be harder to get the rods out. So I'm going to leave the remaining rod out there till about 12 o'clock before I go off for a shower. And then this afternoon, I'm just going to fish at the range that I'm, I can get to comfortably in the wind. And if that's 32, if it's 31, if it's 30, it doesn't matter. As long as I've got the 24 millers on, I won't catch any more bream. And hopefully I'll get a few more of these. We are five nights into our week session now and um, I have to say the action is pretty spread which is really good for the group. Um, there's been bites from one end of the lake to the other. I think pretty much every swimmer has done a bite. They may not have all been landed. Definitely the anglers that are working their swims hard, particularly uh, Harry just down from me, um, Julienne uh, and uh, also big Frank Carussier across from me. You know they're spawning day and night, putting loads of bait out, getting their casts out really good and that is paying off for them and this kind of fishing really does reward the people that are prepared to put the effort in um, and they're certainly doing that. The movements of the fish is, um, you can almost set your watch by it now, they start moving out of that long range Bermuda Triangle area in the sort of late afternoon, early evening. They're definitely onto the back of Harry's bait quite early. They are definitely moving down um, in front of Joseph to, to my right and also um, in front of Marco, that big sort of basin area. Um, has definitely got fish in it. They're not there at the beginning, but from sort of 11, 12 o'clock onwards, the fish are out there and they sort of stay out there. And Spooner is making the most of that, bless him. He's had to go back to England for a family engagement and uh, come back here late at night, put his rods back out again and had two fish straight away. I mean, that is hero sort of stuff. And um, I'm sure he'll get more. He baited up heavy before he left, 40 big spoms full of boilies. Um, and that has really served him. So uh, all credit to him for that. Um, but you know, the lake has, um, has been pretty kind, I have to say, you know, there's been bites all the way round. There's been a lot of big fish caught, but with two days left to go, it's still all to play for. Well, it's been amazing so far. Just being here with all the guys, uh, being a beautiful lake like this, catching some carp, big carp, it's, it's been a dream come true, so it's very, very, very nice. Well, today has been, been a different day. It's been sunny, it's been windy. Uh, the second day of our fishing, or the third, not sure. It was windy as well, and the night was very well. Everybody caught, I caught two carp. So I'm hoping it's gonna be a good night, because the wind, the sun, it makes the carp move. So I think tonight could be a good, good night. Harry's class has shone through and his accurate spotting and high work rate has certainly paid off. With the weather looking great going into the penultimate night, it was no surprise to see lights, camera, action in Frank's swim. He was into a heavy looking fish and after another lengthy battle, a beastie common eventually popped its head up and Frank skillfully guided it into the net. That is, that is, all that Amazingly, Frank had broken his PB common again, 
This monster went £61 and Frank was absolutely blown away. Yes, Frank. Here's <laughs> Frank. <laughs> big fish, mate. Big fish. Yes, very big fish. <laughs> Julien in Swim 6 was also into a fish. Their plan of baiting early in the afternoon is certainly working. It's not a monster, but it's certainly very welcome being so early in the evening. And most importantly, it's proof that the baiting and the rigs are working. Back over on this side, the lights were on in Harry's swim, meaning only one thing, carp on. Just need to wait until they come, start to feed. All the fish seem powerful. First common, uh, very nice fish, beautiful fish. With the night still young, more carp were definitely on the cards. Come on, baby! Let my fire get in! This immaculate common took the scales round to 51 pounds. Matthias was next to get in on the action. It's safe to say he was a bit surprised when a 30 plus koi went into his net. Frank was into his second fish of the night and another good common graced his net. And as daylight arrived, he leant into his third fish. This turned out to be an absolutely massive grass carp. Not what we're after, but still a very impressive fish nonetheless. It's been another great night of action. The ever consistent Frank banked three fish with this common coming just before first light. Next door to Frank, Julien had a chunky looking common as well. Matthias has been following Spooner's coaching to the letter and it's certainly been paying off. Look at that, 33 and a half pounds. Beautiful koi common. You can't tell how happy, I am, how happy I am with that fish. I'm literally just shaking. It's pure happiness that happened to me in Twazil. You have to, you have to feel it yourself to experience it properly. Amazing, I'm over the moon. Matthew's been fishing in swim five between Julien and Frank, and his action has been pretty slow with the fish only turning up on him for a couple of nights. So yesterday he decided on a move for the last two nights. He's seen fish activity in the swim Iron had been fishing as he cycled round the lake on his daily social. The approach that I adapted yesterday evening was actually fairly straightforward. As said, RJ gave me all the information of where I needed to fish and I looked at Neil because he's a top dog in this area, what he is catching on and I just copied that. He's on uh, Loops Wide Gape Exercise 4 uh, combined with a six inch boom section and I just copy that on three rods the same hook baits as he uses which are big link wafters soaked in squid goo. Same as yesterday morning great big hook bait out there um, you know this time over a load of bait three kilos of, of 18 mil link and um, yeah, just roared off out of the blue, didn't see any fish or anything, and I suspect they're probably out in open water in front of the next swim down in front of Joseph in the dark, and I'm probably catching them as they come back to go out into the Bermuda Triangle. But um, fight-wise, you know, it felt good from the word go, um, and uh, I managed to steer it away from the other rods, really sort of took my time. Um, you know, when you're not getting loads of fish, it's very easy to pull too hard and panic and try and get it in. And um, I basically, as it moved over the top of the other two rods to the left-hand side of the swim, I then, it was, it was starting to go more and more left, and there's a tree just down from here, probably about 40 yards down the bank that's fallen in, that sort of stretches out probably 20 yards off the bank. Um, and that, you would get cut off on that, definitely. So, as soon as I saw it going that way, I just put the rod down, tip into the water, and sort of side strained it and almost pulled it towards the tree. And what I find a lot of the time when you do that, they pull back the other way and they go the opposite way to the way the rod is pointing and manage to thread the rod underneath the other two rods. Um, and then the last bit of the battle just seemed to go on and on and on. I could tell then it felt heavier and heavier, the shorter line I got it on. And I could see it was quite a long fish as well and it had shoulders on it and um, didn't realise it was a common until the very last minute. I thought it was a mirror. 
um, but it really, really battled. And I'm just in my head, I'm, I'm just going like a dog on a lead, like a dog on a lead. Like trying to calm myself down to stop myself from pulling too hard and potentially pulling the hook out. And um, yeah, it, it, tried, it tried to sort of, uh, you know, strip line off me quite a few times um, at the very end and just have to just give it a bit of line, just use the tip of the rod. They're really powerful rods as well, these prototype 13 footers. It'd so, be so easy to pull too hard. So um, just very, very careful in those final stages and just, you know, just thinking it's nailed, it's nailed, it's nailed, it's going to go in the net. Just be calm, just, just take your time. Get in that net. Yes, get in! Ah! Oh, yes! Get in! Yes! Yeah man, look at that. 50 pounds, four ounces. Absolutely chuffed the bits with this one. Been up half the night, wondering why I've not had a bite. Thinking I was gonna take the donkey chokers off today, to be honest, and go back onto the 20 millers and suffer a few bream in the process, but not now. Um, those 24 mil spicy crabs with the squid over the top are going out on all rods tonight. And uh, weird how the bite times are now first thing in the morning. And I've been talking to Harry next door about it, and he reckons they're just not there in the evening. So uh, I'll take this one of these a day, and uh, I'll be over the moon. With bite time over and only one night to go, I really wanted to extract as much information as possible from Julien and Frank. I spent most of the afternoon in Frank's swim chatting about his approach before joining Julien in his swim to chat about his tactics this time around. We're late in the week now. The fish have, you've had fish off of your spot. Do you, when you recast your rods now, do you spawn first? And cast second, or do you cast first? It doesn't matter because I'm doing that during the afternoon. Right. And okay. I, the most important thing is that everything has to fish at um, five o'clock. Everything needs to be fishing by five o'clock. Yeah, five or six o'clock. Right. Why okay. is that? Uh, because we can. Uh, the fish are jumping at this time. Yes. Uh, they are more active. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It has to be, don't make any noise after that yeah, time. I completely agree. And, and I, well, I, when I fish for a week session in France, a lot of the anglers around the lake are not looking yeah. at, at the fish's activity at all. And they're baiting up, it's the same time every day, and it can be the wrong time yeah. every day yeah. because they're not aware of when the activity starts. And I found at Gigantica, the activity was starting three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So by midday, 12 o'clock, I'm done. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah. And then you get a run at five, six o'clock. Yeah. Whereas the guys who are spawning at five or six o'clock, if they get a run, it's not until two o'clock in the morning, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because you're baiting up at the time when the fish want to eat yeah. and you scare them away. So it's really interesting that you, yeah. you think the same. And then rig wise, just hybrid stiff. Yeah. A little bit stripped back by the hook. Yeah, yeah. It, it's um, the most important thing that it it has to be very stiff. Yes. So it doesn't tangle. So it doesn't tangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I can I can use a, a boom section with a spinner rig, for example, or something yes. like that, but it, it, it's heavier than. It's heavier. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's heavier. So. Yeah. It's every gram or every single thing, instead of the lead. Yes. Every single thing it who's heavier. Yes. Uh, make your cast harder. Yes. Yeah. So are you are you fishing? Tight lines over the top of that bar. Are you fishing? No. Are you fishing slack, slack or what? Slack. Right. Because if the fish, um, it's not. Um, I don't know how to say because um, the plateau of gravel is two meter and a half deep. So it's two, okay. you're two and a half meters below the surface. Yeah. yeah. And um, the spot where I'm fishing, it's three and a half. So it's a meter 
up yeah. different. And it's very, very... Very steep. Yeah, very steep, yeah. So if I'm not fishing slack, my line will be like this. From the top of the bar into yeah. your baited spot. Yeah. So the fish can be yeah. touching the line yeah. and spooking away. Yeah. So you're fishing... Slack. So, so a bit what, slack. Not, a bit not slack. totally slack. Not a bit complete, slack. Yeah. a bit slack. Right, okay. All right, mate. Well, thank you for all of that. It's all, thank you, it's all in there. It's all in thank there. You. Going into the last night now, looking back on what has been a really good trip to France. I've managed to have six bites, all six have managed to get him a landing net, and that's a big part of my fishing, consistency. I love getting bites, but even more so when they all find their way to the back of the net. That's one thing you can really gauge your results by. Being able to share it in the same swim with Matthias as well, and just help improve some of his fishing, just paying a little bit more close attention to how he baits up, how far he's got a bait in relation to where his rigs are landing, having a play with his rigs, a play with his bait, all them little tweaks, and ultimately that's helped him to have a couple of PBs in the week as well. A new PB mirror for him and a PB koi, which I quite enjoyed soaking him. Last night, who knows, could still be a little twist in the tail too. To buy. And he wasn't wrong. It was our last night and it looked like Matthias was into a good fish. It really does, very heavy. When it got close, it started to go near to his other lines, so I came in to assist. Thankfully, no damage was done, and after a short battle under the rod tip, I managed to get it into the net. Get him. Okay, so actually, I just literally landed a 57-12, beautiful mirror. <laughs> Almost 26 kilo, my new personal best. Last night, quarter sale summit, ah, oh, 2019. My new personal best. Another one. That was not me. <laughs> Dan was into his first night bite in five nights. Those big 24 mil gobstoppers are certainly keeping the bream away. Got him. Yes. With Dan's in the net, Harry was also in. He's caught some absolute units this week, and this common also looks like a good one for what could be his last bite. Well, I feel amazing. Uh, this common looks really, really big one, so uh, my, my dream came true. Nice. I decided to fish all three rods on the same spot last night in the hope that I could pick off multiple fish, and that's exactly what happened. I opted not to recast the rod I'd just caught a fish on because I didn't want to spook any remaining fish off of the area. These tactics worked a treat as my second fish of the night went into the back of the net. It was the final morning of the week and Harry's relentless work rate and attention to detail has been rewarded with this stunning 51 pound common. I found the spot, I uh, stick to it, needed to wait for two days for fish to come, but when they first arrived, they, they came back every night. So Hi My highlight is just being here, hanging with all the guys, seeing different people from, from all, over, all over Europe, from England, see their tactics, see how they're fishing. Uh, everyone was success, everybody caught some fish, so uh, it just shows that different kind of tactics can work in the same leg. The action wasn't over just yet, and with just a few hours to go before we all had to wind in, Joseph was into a carp. Doing battle with big, powerful fish in such beautiful surroundings is what carp fishing is all about. Nice time for a bite. That was my first fish by sunlight and I really enjoyed the fish playing because it was a big one, it was a heavy one. That was my biggest fish in the week. I had the beginning a 37 pounder, and I think a 40 pounder, and the last fish it was a 53 pounder. And yeah, it's really great to catch a fish in frost with all the guys. That's great. You happy? Yeah, really. 
<laughs> what a question, mate. What an amazing week it has been. I think it totals now over 50 fish between the lot of us and three over 60 and 13 more over 50. This place is some lake. I'd like to think we probably couldn't have caught a lot more. The angling skills of the team has been absolutely brilliant this week. Loads of different styles of fishing, loads of different rigs, one bait, definitely having the link between all of us. So wherever those fish swim, they find the link. You know, that has been an edge definitely. And if I was gonna do a lake exclusive, that's what I'll be asking everybody to do in the future. It's an absolutely brilliant bait, it's underused, and it's not been used here much at all, uh, according to Olivier, yet it has absolutely smashed it. Yeah, it's been a brilliant week. I've learnt loads in my own fishing. It's always an education fishing with these guys. There's some really, really skillful anglers in our team. Certainly, I'll be taking what I've learned and putting it into my fishing in the future, um, and I hope everybody watching does the same. What a maggot trip that was. I got a 42 pounds mirror, then a 33 pounds ghosty. Last night, 57 pounds mirror again, which was my uh, uh, dream come true. And guess what? Today morning, I don't got a 46 pounds common. Happy days. He did say another PB. <laughs> As endings to fishing trips go, they don't get much better than that. A lovely brace in the early hours of the morning, one at 35 and a half, and this absolute beast at 40 pound eight. Whenever you get to spend a lot of time with the salesman from across Europe, there's a few things that happen. Plenty of laughs. Mateus! Plenty of Mickey taking, and always a few beers drunk as well. I already can't wait till next year. Yes. Always nice to get one on the last night. First bite at night for five nights. And um, on the 24 mil gobstopper again. And if I didn't have them with, with me, I would have been in real trouble. So many bream out there feeding on that link. I needed something bigger to keep them at bay. And uh, it wasn't a matching bait. It was basically a spicy crab from the high impact range that got made at 24 mil for the boys at Monster Carp. I nicked a few of them off them. And um, that has saved my bacon. And, uh, this one and the couple preceding it were all on the big hook baits. So I will never ever come to France without them again. And I'd just like to say thank you very much to our hosts, Nicole and Olivier, for letting us fish this fantastic lake. As you've heard, there've been so many big ones caught. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And thanks also to the crew. They've done such a fantastic job of filming it, up all day and all night, filming all these bites. And I'm sure the whole thing's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Also to James for providing the food for us, keeping us all fueled during the week. And last but by no means least, my team members. What an amazing bunch of guys. What an amazing bunch of anglers. Awesome. <laughs>